what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we're going to talk about jeepers creepers in this video here today going back over some other details regarding this tv series that i didn't really get to touch on in the last video because i didn't want to keep on talking at that point so i cut the video a little shorter so there are of course a list of characters that i went over in that video and if you heard the list you know that i left out two and two two characters uh those two characters are important to the narrative but again i just wanted to cut that video short because i felt like it was going on too long and i wanted to not have like a 30 minute video i was uploading but just to go over these two characters really quick one is more important than the other in terms of the narrative and their uh significance to what's going on with the creeper so as mentioned the creepers cathedral in the tv show would have had like this mayan calendar which would also have showcased some history related to the monster in the old west civil war times and other aspects of the of the monster's reign during the last century while also being connected to its origins this of course would be something that would be discovered by the characters of greg and rowan who were also part of that original cathedral script before it got turned into this tv series now again as mentioned before in the last video a lot of this tv series outline is just again a more fleshed out version of cathedral in just an episodic format like how jonathan breck said it was back in 2017 during the interview with ign so trisha has a mercenary team that i've touched on briefly hired to protect dairy this team is actually named dark sky the head of dark sky is a character named david brennan who again i mentioned in my last video david brennan believes that the creeper is a demon from the end of days and upon learning about trisha's vision related to dairy he conspires to use the boy as a beacon in order to finally put an end to the creeper once and for all so this person would ultimately be working against trisha at that point because of the fact that they see the bigger picture and what's more important they want to put an end to the creeper and if there is a prophetic dream related to the creeper coming after your son and you've hired somebody who also has an interest in getting rid of the monster and that's what you've hired them to do i can see how that would probably be something that could result in something like that happening where they will take it upon themselves to not listen to you but go out out of their way to put an end to the monster by not having your vision necessarily come true but using an aspect of it if that's who the creeper is going to be coming after according to what you're seeing in your mind now the more interesting character i see here related to uh the creeper and the origins anyway related to the origins and more than anything is blair kittredge the character of Blair Kittredge, who again I mentioned in my last video, I just never really touched on her. I ended it with Thea Mack, I believe. So this character, Blair Kittredge, she's in her 50s and she has a few sons with names who, who whose names are after numbers. She doesn't name her boys like the common names you would name somebody. She's named them after numbers. Like how I guess you could say, I think her name's Jane, is referred to as 11, and everybody else in the Hawkins Laugh facility has numbers, but it's not even related to anything Kim, MK Ultra. She just named her boys numbers. <laughs> um, she's described as being hated in Pole County. Blair lives on a farm, isolated away from everybody else. And again, what she does with her boys is she paints their names on their on their shaved heads. So again, their name numbers and she paints the the names that she's given them on their heads. Why she does that? I don't know. It wasn't outlined really in, in this uh, TV series outline. While the character is hated in the town, Blair might be the town protector because remember, there's this husk that the creeper left behind in the tagger barn. It's empty. The creeper's not in there like a snake shedding its skin almost. Not even almost. It's like that literally. So that must mean that it does this every 23 years, correct? In a twist of what you would see in the series, Blair has like a cellar underneath her farm containing over 40 or so creeper husk protecting them from being burned because remember Helcom and Taggart and Trisha they're all out at the barn wanting to burn that husk unaware of what will happen if they do that and again that is something I've been asked not to reveal because it's related to even further juicier details of what the creeper is 
So now she would ultimately blare that being she would ultimately end up being the most compelling character at that point to me because one who are you <laughs> how do you know about these husk ma'am my guess is that she's connected to maybe early poho settlers who know the truth about the monster that lurks out there but over time they've accepted that not everyone will believe the truth as time passes and civilization evolves and you know we have the introduction of urban legends and the talks of conspiracy theories and of course not everyone has come in contact with this monster well again remember Helcom, trish taggart they want to burn that husk in taggart's barn and they also plan to do the same thing at blair's location when that secret of what she has in the cellar is discovered by dark sky and everyone else involved with trying to take this monster out uh the last thing i wanted to share here in this video with you is this image of an old concept art from cathedral when the creeper calendar was actually going to be tied to the aztecs because in this outline it doesn't mention the aztecs it mentions mayan but here in this concept art and shout out to you jared because this is your work jared ferrardo uh or Fajardo. uh this concept art of the creeper calendar is connected to the aztecs and i think the comic books touch on this a little bit too so this was shared online by Salvin himself many years ago. And again, I will say all of this stuff, while it's interesting, Victor Salva and what he has in mind, ultimately, that's not going to happen. I just don't see how anyone will want to invest in a project that you are so passionate about and you're attached to it and they'd have to jeopardize their brand by working with you. I'm not saying that you can't bring this IP back because I actually had a conversation with an individual uh, that I'll just leave nameless just because of the fact that they might not want to know that I was talking about this IP uh, or be known that they were talking about this IP. But the fact of the matter is you could always revive this with a different name. You could revive it with a different name and you could kind of shed, shed all the baggage that it brings by one, not having Victor involved maybe taking obviously the characters that he made but then making them your own in some fashion by progressing them forward and just giving them their own unique spin from your perspective of how they've ended up you know this talk about dairy being in jeopardy and stuff like that you don't even have to have cathedral play out keep the characters of what was featured in those first three movies and build your own 23 years later narrative build your own origins for the monster because while what he has here is interesting and of course intriguing I don't see it happening if it's something that he is the one responsible for. He's the one that wants to bring it to life. He's already been removed from the film series and they're still squandering that. I don't see how a TV series will be possible. And a TV series probably, again, that would probably cost a lot more, probably take a lot more risk involved too. But let me know what you guys think about those two characters down in the comment section below. And what do you think about the character of Blair? She's the most interesting, like I said. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.